Well, uh, good afternoon, colleagues. Can I just check that everyone can hear me, that the microphone's in the right position? Yep, good. Um, delighted to be here on a Saturday. And for those of you who are following Twitter, um, you'll see that I've been tweeting how impressed I am that so many practitioners have come out on a Saturday when, in fact, you could have been shopping in the streets of Glasgow. So I, I, I applaud you for, for giving up your time to be here. Um, I'm absolutely delighted to have the opportunity to come and speak to you. My biggest challenge this morning will be sticking to 15 minutes and not being wrestled off the stage um, and also not falling down the back of the stage. Um, but I, I, I might have to have a word with Kevin from the Care Inspector if that actually happens. <laughs> um, I have to say that I'm slightly, um, I, I feel a slight, slight sense of trepidation coming to speak to you about inspection following an inspirational speak, speaker like Ferry Lavers. And also being on a programme that has, in fact, Dolly Parton on it. Well, I mean, I'm sorry. <laughs> I hate to disappoint you, um, but uh, my colleagues back at the ranch did find that highly amusing. <laughs> anyway, so um, you've, you've heard a bit about my biography. I'm not going to bore you with any more of that information. What am I going to cover today? A tiny bit about who are we in Education Scotland. I'm sure you know who we are and what we do. I'm going to talk a bit about inspection and where we see it sitting, um, it not being inspection for inspection's sake, but it actually being about the process of improvement and focusing on self-evaluation. I'm going to talk about the new How Good Is Our Early Learning and Childcare, which I'm sure you're all aware of, and what quality indicators we are now using in inspection. And if I've got time at the end, I'm going to give you a tiny whistle-stop tour of what we're finding from inspections um, that we're doing in terms of strengths and areas for improvement. And I'm going to try and do all that in the time allocated. <laughs> just for a minute, um, can I just do a wee show of hands? Put your hand up if you've been inspected in the last year. OK? Put your hands down, put your hands up if you've not been inspected for quite a while. Okay, put your hands down, put your hands up if you're terrified. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Put your hands down and put your hands up if you think you're coming today to be told how to get a good inspection. <laughs> Hallelujah, because that's not what Kevin and I are here to do today. So that, that's really good. And actually, I want to talk to you about about improvement. So let me move on quite quickly. Education Scotland has um, in, in our uh, website a virtuous cycle of improvement. And we see inspection very much at the heart of that, that really improvement should be happening at the front line where you all are, in your settings, in your local authorities, in your um, uh, provider settings. It's, it's you that makes the biggest difference. And we see inspection as just simply the validation of what you're doing. And of course, inspection is necessary. You will all know of the stories of the settings where things don't go so well and where provision for children is poor. And, and that's where we see ourselves very much in trying to make a difference. So the virtuous cycle of improvement really is about practitioners in trying to improve their own practice and trying to get better and ourselves in Education Scotland working with you to try and help and support that. And of course, Education Scotland's no longer a pure inspector. Actually, we're Scotland's national improvement agency for education. <laughs> and scrutiny is only one small part of our function. Um, so that's a really key part for us. And so what is the purpose of inspection in terms of Education Scotland? Really key to that is about pro providing that independence, assurance and accountability to stakeholders. Parents want to know what the quality of provision is in the setting that they send their baby or their child to every day. It is also about providing advice to ministers. And Mr Macdonald was here this morning and I work very closely with his office in relation to translating what we're finding for inspection so that he knows about that and he can make policy decisions based on what we know is happening in the front line. And that's a really important part of the purposes of inspection. And of course, it's about spreading good practice. There's fantastic practice out there in Scotland. We're going to hear about some of it this afternoon. Superb practice. And Education Scotland has a unique role working with our colleagues in the Care Inspectorate to really look at how we spread that practice across Scotland and celebrate it too. 
So the cycle of self-evaluation is absolutely cru crucial in this. What you do on a day-to-day -day basis about bringing about improvement is so vital. And we classify it as the looking inwards, outwards, forwards mantra, and you'll maybe have heard that um, around. But actually, it's about what you do on a day-to-day -day basis that really makes you stop and think, wait a minute, we need to change things, or we need to do more of that. That's so important. It's not about folders of bumps. It's not about hundreds and hundreds of tick lists to prove that you've done something just in case inspectors come and they might ask for it. It's actually about what you do on a day-to-day -day basis to bring about improvement for the children and the staff in front of you. And that's what's of absolute utmost importance. And I would challenge you to really to be thinking today, is it self-evaluation or is it self-delusion? And I think in Scotland, we've got both sides of the coin. We've got those people out there who will in their self-evaluation say, I think we're kind of satisfactory on that, or I think we're kind of good on that, when in actual fact, they're very good or excellent. But equally, we have people, and we see them on a regular basis, who say, yeah, 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 we think we're fives or sixes across the board. And we go into inspect, and I have to say, it's quite shocking what we find. So actually, really reflecting on the questions there in front of you is really of critical importance. What impact are you having? And dare I say it, I'm going to ask you the so what question. And you know what inspectors like, they love asking that question. I, you know, I have it always in my head. But, it, but really, it is for you and your staff to be thinking, so what? Why are we doing this? And if what you're doing in your settings on a day-to-day -day basis does not have a direct impact on the children, on the families, on the parents, on your communities, on your staff, then I would challenge you, why are you doing it? And I sincerely hope that you'll not say to Kevin and I later, well, we're doing it because it's inspectors want it. Because we really need to get about what we're all about, which is about the quality of children's experiences in front of you on a day-to-day -day basis. So moving on, we launched How Good Is Our Early Learning and Childcare? It's a bit of a, you know, a, bit of a mouthful. Um, around about April, followed hot on the heels of the new How Good Is Our School 4. So for those of you who have strong connections with primary schools, you'll know that they're using a new framework as well. And all these frameworks articulate together and are EFQM based. And that gives you the framework there. You'll get the slides later, so don't worry about trying to scribble down all the notes. So, what would I say about early, um, how good is our early learning and childcare? Um, it raises the bar. There is no doubt about that. For those of you who for years and years and years have used Child at the Centre, Child at the Centre 2, this one does raise the bar and I am not, I'm not ashamed to say that. That's right and proper in 2016 that we really look at upping the ante again. And I know it's difficult for yourselves when you've been using one framework and you're not sure which framework am I supposed to be using? Is it this framework, that framework? What about building the ambition? We really would encourage you to start to get your heads around um, this particular framework. And in particular, a really important part of it are the challenge questions. So it's designed not just about inspection, it's designed to help you in your setting reflect on your practice. And you don't need to be thinking about what questions might I ask? You actually just need to refer to the document because the challenge questions are all there. Interesting that this time around, we've gone for only level five illustrations. We have not gone our normal practice in the past would be to show you what we think week looks like. We're not doing that anymore because that's not an aspirational goal. So level five is really where we need to get to, and that's what we would hope everyone's excuse me, aspiring to. We've got features of highly effective practice, and as I say, the challenge questions. So I really hope that if you've not had a chance to look at it yet, that you do so and, and that you are able to do that with your staff. So it is about making sound judgments using that framework on the impact that you're having on learners, on your children, and that is central to your self-evaluation, not filling in reams and reams and reams of paper for paper's sake, or did I say it, taking millions of photographs that nobody ever looks at or refers to? How many of us have done that? And I hold my hand up because I've been there. So what are we focusing on in inspection? From September, first week in September, my team were out and about touring, touring the country. Here are the quality indicators that we're focusing on. You'll see leadership there. You'll know in previous inspection models, we didn't have a focus on leadership. We maybe picked it up during the inspection, but it wasn't a QI. We do have it now. 
Clearly, we have learning and teaching and assessment, which is an important one about the pedagogical skills um, of what's happening within your setting. We have children's progress. You would expect us to see there, see that one there. And in the, the, the correlation of the other document, the school document, that's the attainment one. And then crucially, back to what, referring back to what Ferry said earlier, we have one around ensuring well-being, equality and inclusion. And that's the one that wraps up the additional support needs and meeting the needs of all of the children in your setting. You'll also see that we're also um, offering a further QI to be negotiated with you. So if there's an area that you've been working really hard on, you'd like us to have a look at it, you can volunteer that. If it's an area that you're concerned about um, and you would like some professional advice, professional dialogue, and you know that's a really strong focus of our, of our inspections, is that time for support and professional dialogue, then you could opt for that. And equally, we've got a few themes coming through around curriculum and around partnerships that we'll pick up in every inspection. So what are we finding out from inspections? How are we doing for time? We're not bad for time. Oh, five minutes, good. So strengths that we're identifying from inspections. Children's engagement. I have been an HMI now for 13 years. I know I started when I was in primary six. <laughs> um, but, um, but children's engagement in their play has been a strength for a long time, and that is a good thing. But it's not enough, ladies and gentlemen. It is not enough. Relationships, absolutely crucial. Effective support from, from staff teams and teamwork of staff, all coming out of strengths as strengths. These are all so important to children's well-being and to their progress in your setting. And staff commitment to self-evaluation. And can I draw, if I could, I would highlight that word commitment, because I'm going to come on to what needs to improve. Because it's all very well being committed to it, but it's a so what question again. So moving on, and where are the areas for improvement? So what are the things that are still the tricky issues? And I wonder how many of you in here will look at that list and say, yeah, I find that a bit difficult too. And it is that thing around, is it, is it play-based learning? Is it formal learning? Is it group time? Is it, what is it? Um, and how do you get the right balance there that meets the needs of your children? How do you involve your children in planning their learning and leading their learning? That's a really big focus for us. And how do you develop that depth and choice and challenge in learning? Even if you're two, even if you're three, and we saw some really good examples of that on the clips earlier on today. So that's an area that's still not quite right. Tracking and monitoring. There's an awful lot of tracking and monitoring goes on out there in your settings, hundreds of it. But does it actually lead to better outcomes for children? And again, I challenge you, if you've got millions of tracking and monitoring systems, if it's not actually making an impact, why are you doing it? I ask you that question and I'll leave you to ponder that. Self-evaluation that brings about systematic improvement. Again, you, you saw the previous slide. Yeah, we're all committed to it. We're all signed up to it. We think it's a good thing to do. But does it actually translate into better outcomes? Question mark. In some cases it does and does very well. But it's not consistent. And I think that's my message today is, is that consistency word. And finally, leadership of learning is an area that's still coming, coming out as an area needing improvement. Management is one thing, and yes, lots of strengths in there, but actually the leadership of learning part is the bit that's inconsistent across the country, and that's an area that we'll have some focus on. So these are the kind of big themes coming out of our inspections over the last um, year or so. And hopefully as we go through the next year, we'll see some of those areas beginning to shift. So I'm going to pause there and my colleague Kevin's about to come up to, to give you the care inspector perspective. I hope that's been helpful and I'll be very happy to take some questions later. Thank you very much, Leslie. Thank you. Good morning or good afternoon, conference. Um, I'm delighted to be here with you today to tell you a bit about the work we're doing in the Care Inspectorate in terms of our early year inspection. But can I just say, first of all, how impressed and overwhelmed I was when I arrived here this morning and saw the numbers uh, that were in attendance. I think what that tells me is that from every single person in this room, there is a shared commitment and passion for promoting the health and well-being of our most important assets, uh, Scotland's children. So again, I, like others, commend you for that. Um, as I say, I'm delighted to have this opportunity because apart from what the, the kind words from the, the, the desk there in terms of my background, I also started off my inspection um, 
career, if you like, in HMI in 2005, and I was there for six years as part of the Child Protection Inspection Programme. But I'm here to tell you a bit about the Care Inspectorate and our approach and developing approaches and how we're changing to keep pace with a, a, rapid, a rapidly changing uh, scrutiny environment. Our vision in the Care Inspectorate is, is quite clear. We believe that every person in Scotland should receive high-quality, safe and compassionate care that meets their individual needs, rights and choices. So in the next uh, 15 minutes, uh, I propose to tell you a bit about our statutory responsibilities uh, that we have, with a particular focus on early years inspections. I want to tell you about some of the changes we have made and are continuing to make in how we inspect services. And I want to tell you a bit about how we've shifted our uh, stance from what might be perceived as a rather traditional approach to regulation to one which is more about collaboration. And finally, a, brief, a very brief mention of some of uh, what I think are exciting uh, developments. So again, in terms of our uh, role, um, that's defined in statute, the Public Services Reform Act, and it's up there for you to read. Um, quite interestingly, it includes a, a specific duty to further improvement in social work and social care. But we in the, uh, in the care inspectorate believe that those two things aren't separate. We believe that we can discharge that statutory responsibility to further improvement in social work and social care through our inspection work, and therein signals the change of direction that we've taken in that respect. So again, some fairly um, standard um, aspects of our responsibilities, but just thinking about the cohort involved, particularly in our early years work, roughly 911,000 children in Scotland under the age of 16 years and of those, uh, 353,000, roughly, are under the age of five, year, or five years and under. So again, uh, a breakdown of the percentages there of the children who are in daycare uh, services, um, not including, of course, those that are in out-of-school care. I think it's quite interesting to remind us of, of the size of the workforce, and I suspect, uh, in view of the current government policy, a workforce that's liable to increase quite significantly over the next uh, five years. But at the moment, just under 36,000 uh, people working in regulated early years services. And of those, 5,720 are actively childminding, and about 30,250 in daycare of children's services. And again, a workforce, as I say, that is liable to grow quite significantly. Care Inspectorate was established in 2011, brought together the Child Protection Inspection Team of HMIE, which, of which I was part. It brought together the former Social Work Inspection Agency and the former Care Commission. It's quite staggering to think that we, just in our regulated care services, have responsibility for almost 14,000 regulated care services, of which 10,000 of those are, are, are children's services, and probably accounts for uh, the grey hairs that I'm uh, getting day by day in terms of some of those. No, but I jest. It's a, it's a challenging job, but a very rewarding one. But of those 10,000 services, um, almost 10,000 are children's services. I say almost 6,000 childminders and almost 4,000 Daycare, daycare services for children. But just a bit more about our wider responsibility, strategic inspections of uh, services for children, strategic inspections of services for adults and older people, joint inspections of Her Majesty's Inspectorate of Prisons. And again, you might wonder why I'm telling you all of this, but services delivered for adults impact on services for children. So again, I was very pleased to note that in your delegates list, there was actually somebody here today from HMIP uh, or HM Prisons in Dumfries. So again, very relevant. And finally, our wider responsibilities to inspect social work services, which include criminal justice social work services. So again, all very important, as they say, services that impact on adults. So by us able to join up all of that scrutiny, we can fly the fag for our children and young people in a number of different guises. I think public perception of the quality of services is, is often influenced by what people read in the press. Sometimes the occasional failing service, sometimes the occasional high-profile child protection uh, issues. Rightly so that those are brought to the fore, but sometimes undermine all the good work that's going on in our early years services. 
Because again, um, whether that's, uh, that perception is formed by complaint or media coverage, I think what you can see there is roughly nine out of ten uh, daycare services are performing uh, at a very good or better uh, stand, good or better standard, and similarly, 92 per cent, uh, or again, almost nine out of ten uh, childminders. So again, very few services, but again, no room for complacency. And uh, in terms of investment for the future, I think we have to make sure that we continue to drive together that uh, priority of early uh, childcare, early learning and childcare. In terms of the changing approach, just, to, just over a year ago, the appointment of our new Chief Executive signalled a, a very different approach to our inspection. Um, we had primary, I think it's important to say that we recognise in current inspections that primary responsibility for improvement lies with the services themselves. In the past, we might have come along and pointed out what was being done well and what might needed to be improved and what wasn't working well, but we might not have had that professional dialogue where we discussed how things might be improved through signposting or through reference to work that is going on ongoing in perhaps other areas. So again, um, in some people's eyes, moving to that more collaborative approach and shifting away from the uh, traditional approach to regulation, some people thought that, that was, uh, there was a danger there, that you could be inspecting your own work and compromising your independence as a scrutiny body. We don't think so. We think we can still work collaboratively and work with you together and uh, discharge our responsibilities and at the same time um, uh, support improvement. And I think that through that different approach, and it is a work in progress, we feel that we can be uh, much more added value to the improvement that we all seek to make, the continuous improvement. And again, we know and recognise, as Leslie's talked about, the importance of self-assessment or self-evaluation. Not something you do for inspection, but something you do which is actually, if done, if done well, more powerful than inspection because that is how you drive continuous improvement in your services on a day-to-day -day basis. So again, it's about signposting good practice, and it's about that very rich and very rewarding professional dialogue ongoing throughout, throughout our engagement with you, but particularly during inspection. So in terms of our different changing approach, and it is very much work in progress, we're uh, now from the 1st of July taking a more in, uh, targeted, intelligence-led approach to our inspections. And that, those are words that roll off the tongue. But in, a, in actual fact, we need to recognise those services that have a history of performing well and have a slightly different approach to those that need perhaps a bit more focused attention and support. As Leslie's talked about, a, a more focused approach on outcomes, and those are other words that roll off the tongue. But what we mean by that, quite simply, is what are the day-to-day -day experiences of the children in the services that you work in? What is it like for that child or young person? And so relevant was that uh, those presentations this morning in terms of, of that work. We recognise that you are all working, we are all working in a rapidly changing scrutiny landscape. We recognise the challenges you face. So we must support improvement and innovation. And to do that, we need to adapt our own approaches uh, to be able to add that value and still discharge our statutory responsibilities. And lastly, and by no means least, we need to be more responsive to national policy agenda, and we heard a bit about that this morning from uh, Mr Macdonald. So some of the changes, just very briefly, in terms of the childminders, um, that was the first of our major changes, moving to a more outcome-focused report, using the uh, GIRFEC uh, practice model and the Shinari indicators to produce port reports which are more outcome focused and uh, in terms of shorter reports that hopefully are more helpful. Signposting good practice and again ensuring that there's professional dialogue. In our daycare services, um, from the 1st of July, we are now differentiating between uh, those services which are uh, performing good or better, low medium risk, but there's no concerns, notification. Uh, we'll be looking at the uh, at least two themes, the important theme of quality of care and one other, and that will be determined by intelligence. And for those that are performing uh, at uh, adequate or below, and perhaps higher risk, or where there's been issues of concerns, we will do a more intense inspection focusing on all four quality themes. 
So again, important to consider those themes in terms of care and support, the quality of care and support, the quality of staffing, the quality of the environment, and the quality of management and leadership, as Leslie's highlighted. And finally, just a, a very uh, brief mention of uh, current developments. We heard from the Minister this morning the expansion uh, of early learning childcare and the programme of trials that will be rolling out uh, later on this year. And again, we feel we have to play an important part and recognise the challenges there, and that's what helps drive also our commitment to support improvement and innovation because there will be many challenges that lie ahead in terms of that expansion. And we had reference to this morning from the Minister the importance that childminders already play in some uh, local authorities in terms of the partnership, but we think that partnership is likely to increase uh, in a number of different uh, forms. We are uh, also engaged in some very important work uh, around design principles for daycare services, and I think that will be vitally important, uh, particularly in terms of the early learning childcare expansion over the next five years. We have the national care standards that are being developed and will be rolled out from next year. Um, those national care standards will perhaps not feature things like space standards before. So therefore, again, I think these design principles will provide the backdrop and the, the principles for those areas that want to adapt to existing premises or build new premises. And that is work that is going on with extensive consultation, uh, again, involving uh, earlier Scotland as well. So I'm sure that will pay dividends. Something similar already exists for older people's services, but we think that there's huge merit in this piece of work for the early years, uh, early childcare services. We're progressing work on the induction framework for childminders, a learning pathway, so to speak, and I think that will support, hopefully, the commitment to the early learning childcare expansion, particularly in those areas where there's a partnership arrangement with uh, childminders. And of course, last but no means least in terms of that, our ongoing um, joint partnership working with colleagues in Education Scotland. And having come from there in 2005, or from 2005 to 2011, I think uh, I was already well versed in, in the approaches that have uh, developed from their previous work. And you know, no, no Leslie from as far back as that. And that helps us work together to make sure that where we have a joint interest, that doesn't uh, involve, as far as we can possibly avoid, duplication of effort or confusion on the part of those that deliver and manage the services on a day-to-day -day basis. And finally, um, publications like My World Outdoors, um, which I think has um, certainly um, a resource that's encouraged uh, outdoor play to deliver even better outcomes for children. And as a grandparent with uh, a child, a grandson of three and a, a granddaughter of three months, I have never been so focused on early learning and childcare. <laughs> I, I take pride in the fact that my grandson's nursery still uh, doesn't really know what I, I do. They think I do something <laughs> in child protection. I um, do now. <laughs> I hope there's nobody here from the borders uh, nursery concerned. But um, no, a lot of good work, and I'm, I was I was absolutely staggered that all our hard copies of that disappeared before even the conference started this morning. So um, that's that's really good. So again, that tells me that my time's up, but it was actually, I think, my last slide. So thank you very much, and please don't uh, hesitate to come forward with questions. We don't always get it right. It is work in progress, but that is the journey we're on, and that is the direction of travel we aim to be going in. Thank you very much. Indeed. Thank you very much. My name is Judith Thomas and I'm Head of Centre at Fergusley P5 Centre in Paisley. Fergusley P5 Centre is a local authority setting situated within the heart of Fergusley Park in Paisley. We provide early learning and childcare for babies, toddlers and young children aged 0 to 5 years. There are many challenges facing our families and children with our community recently being highlighted as the most affected by poverty in Scotland. As a setting, we have always had a real belief that what we are doing is making a difference to families within Fergusley, and our hope was that being inspected would help confirm our direction for improvement and ensuring equity for all of our children. Our inspection was conducted by Education Scotland in November and our evaluations were as follows. Children's experiences 
excellent improvements in performance, excellent meeting learning needs, excellent curriculum, very good, and improvement through self-evaluation, excellent. After reflection, the key points we took from our inspection were, number one, that the inspector took the time to understand fully the context of our setting and the challenges that are faced within it for children and families. She embraced the pedagogical approach we have to early learning and childcare that is unique to us. The inspection was framed around this and focused on the impact and difference it was making to the holistic development of our children. Our philosophy was captured throughout the process. Number two was the commitment of our staff team during the inspection process in taking both personal and collegiate responsibility for quality improvement. The professional role of staff and their genuine interest in developing the opportunities for all our children is reflected day to day within our practice, but the dialogue that they sought with the inspector has helped them develop this further. Our vision of delivering the highest quality learning for children is shared by children, families and staff within our centre. The staff went out their way to create dialogue and make sure this was recognised. The inspector ensured their voices were heard. If we were to wish for anything as a result of the inspection, it would be that although the not to three age group of children are commented on within the report, Consideration should be given by Education Scotland to formally evaluate the practice. At present, evaluations are based on curriculum for excellence, therefore children aged three years and above. If we, as an early learning and childcare sector, know the impact quality interactions have on brain development for our youngest children, base practice and improvement and research, and use guidance such as building the ambition to influence this, then surely evaluations would help challenge practice and raise the profile of how crucial quality early intervention is in raising attainment and closing the gap. As we move forward, we continue to use current research and best practice to maximise the opportunities we have to develop the service and ensure children have the highest possible quality of learning we can provide. Passionate educators continue to support the family to be engaged in their children's learning journey and through working together, we are giving the children the skills to be all they can be and the desire to be even more. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Kat Deepon and I'm here to say to at Green Acres Nursery in Glasgow. Our nursery um, is within a, a very affluent area. Uh, we are in partnership with Glasgow City Council. Uh, our recent inspection was by the Care Inspectorate, and that was in April of this year. We had just went through quite a few changes in the nursery, so it was the first time myself was part of the management team. I have been there as a practitioner, but this was a big, big change for myself. At the onset of um, our, inspect our inspection, communication was very, very strong. We had a very positive experience and we received sixes across the board, which was absolutely outstanding. We were one of the first to have the new inspection and in the west of Glasgow to receive excellence. At the beginning and through the, the show round of the nursery, the dialogue between ourselves and our inspectors was very clear. Their focus that they had, they told us what they were looking for. It was all about children's outcomes, what we were doing for parents. Um, and the discussions with staff, with parents and with myself was very, very positive. Personally, for me, it felt more like a showroom just to share practice. It did not feel like an inspection. It had a really positive impact on all of the staff. I think that they felt that they weren't being judged. Um, it gave them a, a really a, a strong boost and a sense of achievement. They then became leaders of their own right. 
all stand for very positive comments and they continued throughout the day. I think they felt that they were rewarded for the recognition. After our inspection and discussions with staff, we looked at what we wished for the future. And I think regarding the inspection process, for us it was to build more communication and a better relationship with the inspector. I think we felt if, for instance, as a team, that we've developed something in particular, then if it has a positive impact on our children and our families, then why should we have to wait till the inspection comes round? Why can we not have that communication with the inspector to make a phone call and say, come and see what we've done? This is something that I think would eliminate the negative stigma towards inspectors. And I think all of us feel that, because when we're due and the time comes round, questionnaires come in, everyone is up in arms. And you know what, we are doing a great job. So this is our time to shine, it shouldn't just be when it's time for inspection. I know that the inspectors are there to support us, and I do feel supported, but I think by having this and extending this, I think it would feel a lot better, and especially on the staff. On a personal note to finish off, and although as a manager I feel that achieving sixes across the board was an outstanding achievement, that was to the staff currently within the centre. We've also got to look at staff who's previously worked there, and in particular the previous manager Tracy Robertson. I think her skills and expertise in the field of childcare really laid the foundation for Green Acres. And now my challenge and the challenge of my team now is to sustain that, what's already been there. Thank you. Good afternoon, Andrea. My name is Tracy Devaney. I'm currently head of centre at the Lanark Early Learning and Child Care Centre, which is situated within Western Martin Child Council. At the time of the inspection, I had been in post for two years, and our inspection was by Education Scotland and took place in May 2016. We have 60 children attending in the morning and 60 children attending in the afternoon, and the children are aged 3 to 5 years old. For me, at the time of the inspection, it was my very, very, very first time to be a lead during an inspection process. Although I have been part of a validated self-evaluation, which is taking place within our authority, this validated self-evaluation did give me a chance to understand the process of an inspection. It helped to prepare me. How did I feel? I was delighted. Honestly, I was really nervous. I was really anxious. I wondered what would my role in the inspection be? Um, would the inspection process actually validate my own self-evaluation and that of the validated self-evaluation which had taken place earlier? However, as Head of Centre at the Lanark, I'm completely committed to, the, to developing approaches of improvements, raising attainment and addressing national priorities to ensure the best possible outcomes for all the children who attend and family, sorry, who attend the Lanark Early Learning and Childcare Centre. Therefore, I welcome the inspection to validate the self-evaluation and to help me to plan for improvements in order to close the poverty attainment gap. When considering the format to use for today's presentation, I did consider the two stars in a wish. But to be honest, I struggled to find something that was negative about my whole inspection process and therefore I've amended the format for today to three stars. <laughs> the first star that I'd like to discuss with you, and something that I find very, very beneficial to me, was the introductory phone call from Jackie. And that was two weeks before the inspection began, and it really helped to build an early relationship. She reassured me. She reassured me that we had a common focus on what the inspection process would be, and that was ensuring positive outcomes for all our children in their learning. Jackie was a very friendly person, we had lots in common, and was very helpful throughout the process. The second stat that we wanted, I want to talk about 
was how supportive and transparent the inspectors were at all times through the process. On their arrival, they told me about their focus, they told me what the daily plan would be and they helped to put me and the staff team at ease. Evidence was gathered from a range of sources, not only from written evidence, but through in-depth professional dialogue with both myself, the parents, children and staff and associated partners. The third star was how Jackie encouraged me to continue on looking for improvements and how we could move forward, some of which I've already begun to put in place, including setting individual targets, the reintroduction of self portraits, and even indeed organising a visit to a centre out with our own authority, with a focus on sharing good practice, informing and improving our own practice, which is all vital and I feel strongly if we are to positively impact on the outcomes for all our children and family. Ultimately, believe me, I'd like to tell you that my inspection experience was very supportive, validated my self-evaluation and will ensure that I continue to deliver a high quality service for all children and family attending Dalmanic Early Learning and Child Care Centre. Thank you. Hello, my name is Lisa Barnes and I am head teacher at Mayfield Nursery School. And in Mayfield Dalkeith, that's Midlothian and it's just south of Edinburgh. We had joint inspection with Education Scotland and the Care Inspectorate in just the last week of May, beginning of June this year. Really, like everybody, we were very nervous. But um, we found that the inspection team were very respectful. The inspectors really took time to dig down and understand our particular context. Um, Mayfield is an area in Midlothian where 70% of the children attend the nursery come from the 30% um, poorest wards in the country. So the things that we do particularly there because of the particular needs that we're serving. So, for us, self-evaluation is very much at the heart of driving our improvement on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, when the inspectors came, it was just towards the um, end of um, my acting period as an acting head teacher, which was two years, and um, we had taken quite a lot of risks in how we approach self-evaluation. We were really focusing on what our learners need, how evaluating our community and thinking about raising the bar and closing the gap. The inspection was a great opportunity, sometimes didn't feel like that, but it was a great opportunity for all staff to talk about, to analyse and review where we were in our journey, where we'd started together, what we'd each done individually and collectively, and the difference, really critically, the difference we're making for our children. Um, we were all very much involved in the discussions with the inspectors through the active atmosphere for the scoping, um, but then beyond that, it was the staff that took over, and they had the conversations with the inspectors as the, as the days unfolded. It was fantastic that our um, self-evaluation was validated, how we were working, the risks we were taking, the judgments we were making um, about where we were going, and what we're going to do next. And really, everybody enjoyed the professional dialogue and, as we always do, the so what, what we're going to do about that, so the actions that we're going to take. Um, another really positive part of our inspection was the importance of collaboration and involving all our collaborative partners in the joint work that we do. We have a lot of partners that we work with. and. Um, so we work with the Educational Psychology Service, looking at professional learning and action, making sure research and evidence-based practice is absolutely core in our work. Um, but we're working with a lot of different partners from children and families and all the different services. So we were really, really um, lucky that all our partners came and rallied <laughs> and supported us. And that was part of a very, very interesting discussion for the inspectors and we look forward to taking that further forward as we 
make our journey forward because we're not there yet. Thank you very much. Hello. Uh, my name is Fiona Douglas and I'm the Senior Practitioner and Manager of St Andrews Nursery in Dumfries, where I've worked for the last 20 years. St Andrews is a voluntary-based charitable group run by a parental committee and I'm also a commission provider for the council. We have been running for 30 years, in fact this month, and I can accommodate 26 children per session from two years, nine months to five. We also provide a messy play service for birth to three years for parents and children. The nursery is located in the town centre and we are within a church hall. We have used a big hall as well and recently we have developed the garden area. We had an unannounced care inspection in March this year, which was a very positive experience. We were inspected by someone who had never been to a nursery before and we were delighted to receive excellent in both quality of care support and quality of environment while maintaining very good in staff area management leadership. And at that time we were the only nursery in Dumfries and Gallery to receive two sexes, so I have to say I was quite proud. Highlighted within our inspection were the opportunities provided for parents to engage within our setting and support their children's learning experiences and well-being. This begins with our settling in programme and continues all the way through to the individualised school transitions for every child. As we are a town centre based nursery, our children can attend many different schools, so good links are not, excuse me, are not only at transition time but throughout the year, it's very important to us when possible. We are continually looking at ways to support our parents and children, and we have designed workshops on literacy, numeracy, and health and well being for parents and their children, and parents have supported these and evaluated their worth while also giving us ideas about what they would like to learn next to help their children on their journey. We've invented curriculum sacks to enhance our home links along with the original caper schemes and created our own story sacks as well. And we have regular open sessions for parents to come in and see what the child has been learning. All these were deemed very positive by the care inspector. Uh, we also encourage the children's input in their personal, and parents in their personal learning plans by books and learning wall displays. This informal process of general chatting to the staff team encourages and breaks down the barriers between the parents and ourselves. We are very proud of the work we do with our parents and we feel it's by far one of our greatest assets. We are also delighted that our environment was thought to be excellent. We offer the children a very wide variety of resources within the nursery room and ensure that literacy, numeracy and health and wellbeing are firmly embedded within our planning. And the children make daily decisions about which equipment they wish out of the room and how they utilise their own learning, and this was met with positivity by the inspector. As we have had major changes in our garden area involving the children, the parents and the staff team, we were hopeful that we'd managed to create an outdoor learning environment that really gave enhanced opportunities for learning, and we were thrilled at the response by the inspector and encouraged further to develop our forest school type experiences. This area is continuing to be developed as just recently the children decided they would like a pond, and they designed it and they built it. While it's great to see these grades, there is always room for improvement. Regular self-evaluation involving everyone, including children, parents, colleagues, both out, with and within the setting, it is a must to ensure that we are getting it right, not just for the child, but also for the family. So we should continue to monitor practice, enhance the skills that we all do, share good practice, do further training, and reflect how we as practitioners are supporting children. Thank you.